In the first place, the strong creatures known as celestials made the sun and different types of life, and the universe was at pace. However, at some point, an unnatural types of predator called deviants rise up out of profound space and start to obliterate everything in their way. The head of the Celestials Arishem bring an immortal group of supernatural people known as the Eternals from the planet Olympia sends them on their ship called the Domo to Earth. In Mesopotamia in 5000 BC, a group of people are fishing when out of nowhere they are gone after by deviants emerging from the ocean. At that point the Eternals show up to defend them with their powers. Icarus utilizes his irradiates and flies to battle the monsters, while Makari utilizes her super speed to move the people far away. Kingo shoots energy impacts to go after from a remote place, while Thena and Gilgamesh call energy weapons to battle hand to hand. Sprite offers help with her illusions, and Fastos likewise upholds through his high-level inventions. A furious fight results, and because of the timeless magnificent collaboration, before the deviants are crushed, and group leader Ayak recuperates any wounds they got in fight, the people are frightened of them and attempt to assault. However Druid utilizes his psyche-controlling powers to quiet them down. Then Circe changes a crude knife into real decent metal as proof they're here to help humankind. Years pass and in the current day, the Eternals live claiming to be typical among people. In London, Circe goes to class where she should be giving a lesson, what's more, she finds her boyfriend Dane filling in for her, unexpectedly the talk is hindered by an enormous seismic tremor, so Circe makes her students go for cover under the tables and uses her power, to prevent some debris from crushing a student, in the close by stream. A dog observers a deviance come out of the stream. At night, Circe later celebrates Dane's birthday with a couple of companions. Sprite utilizes a illusion to look more older and hide the reality she ages intellectually however not truly. Anyway the illusion is broken if somebody contacts and she rapidly surrenders. Dane asks Circe to move in with him. However she turns him down, and he starts contemplating whether she's hiding something because Sprite is continuously offering odd remarks. After the party, the triplet heads back home. Yet out of nowhere they are gone after by a tremendous deviant named Crow. Circe utilizes her powers to catch it in the ground, but Crow before long separates and runs to the streets. Sprite projects an illusion that duplicates her furthermore, Circe to befuddle the beast, yet Crow shocks them by having the option to tell who the genuine ones are. Which deviants would never do. When Crow is going to kill Sprite, Icarus appears and saves her. Then continue to fight the deviant. Their fight makes a transport get flipped, furthermore, Circe hurries to change into flower petals to stay away from an accident. Crow shocks everybody again when it uncovers it can recuperate its own injuries. However obviously Icarus has the advantage and escapes through the stream. Subsequently Circe comes clean with Dane about her identity, and he asks her for what valid reason they never helped her in humankind's most prominent misfortunes. Circe explains that they were told to never interfere in order to not obstruct their improvement as a general public. Subsequent to obliterating the deviants, they were told to look out for Earth until the time had come to return home. She additionally lets Dane know that she and Icarus were together for a really long time. However it didn't end up actually working. She later, returns to her apartment to talk about the issue with Sprite and Icarus, and subsequent to coming to the end the earthquake and the Deviant are associated. They agree that they need to get the, group back together. This gets back memories of 575 BC Babylon. Humankind is creating, under the direction of the Eternals, who battle the Deviants at whatever point they attempt to assault. Without fail they show up they're brutal and merciless. However the Eternals battle together in wonderful sync to kill them rapidly easily. After one specific extreme fight, Ayak utilizes her unique power stone to shape a connection to talk with Arishem. She communicates regard for his stupendous arrangement, but she could do without how might affect people. Arishem tells her not to get joined to them and to finish the arrangement. Afterward Ayak returns to the nest where the Eternals are living among society straightforwardly. Fastos is developing a steam engine to accommodate humanity, and Sprite utilizes her powers to engage kids with stories that show some major signs of life through her illusions. Druid likes utilizing his mind control to stop battles, yet Makari reproves him since they aren't assumed to interfere. Meantime Icarus and Circe get to know one another and fall in love, letting it out to each other with the excellence of Earth as their observer. Years after the fact they get married in the Gupta Empire, back in the present, Circe, Sprite, and Icarus travel to South Dakota to Ayak's farm. Just to think that she is dead outside her home, Sprite cries and uses an illusion to remember her. Arriving at the resolution that Crow killed Ayak by retaining her powers, that is the reason it could mend itself. When Circe approaches the body to grieve, the stone in Ayak's body that was gave to her the Celestials emerge and join themselves to Circe. This makes her momentarily get an impression of Arishem saying it is nearly time before she fails to focus on it. Sprite brings up that Ayak has picked Circe as her replacement, yet Icarus is stressed it could be Mod Wiry. This brings back another memory. In 1521 AD in Tenochtitlan, the group was fighting the last deviants left on the planet. Meanwhile people are at war, however Ayak doesn't allow Druid to stop them. 
Abruptly Thena starts feeling debilitated and says it's past the point of no return because soon everybody will die. Her eyes change and she starts going after her companions, harming a couple of them because of the component of shock. Ayak gives her hurt her access inspiration to draw near and utilize her powers at the forefront of her thoughts, clearing it from this odd motivation response. Thena assaults her in any case, so Gilgamesh approaches and fights her until he figures out how to take her out. Later when Thena awakens without remembering what occurred, it's uncovered she experiences Mod Wiry, a consequence of her old memories imploding in on themselves and making her crazy, there's no remedy for it. The best way to improve her would be to eradicate her brain totally for her to begin once again which Ayak believes it's the best solution for well-being. The others would rather not lose the Thena they love, and Druid yells at Ayak, scrutinizing her leadership. He's worn out on seeing humanity annihilate each other without interfering, so unexpectedly utilizes his powers to stop the conflict and he passes on to deal with his own, declaring the best way to stop him would be killing him. Gilgamesh reports he can deal with Thena, so Ayak permits everybody to proceed to live among people. The deviants are now finished, so presently they can track down their own motivation while waiting for the call from home. Back to the present, Circe, Sprite, furthermore, Icarus traveled to Mumbai to find Kingo, who is presently a well-known Bollywood superstar. His valet Karun knows his mysterious and has been working with him for a really long time. The threesome lets Kingo know what's happening. What's more, at first he will not go, saying he prefers this life. Anyway Karun persuades Kingo to go what's more, be the legend everybody respects, and Karun even acknowledges to go along to record everything in a narrative style. They take Kingo's personal luxury plane to Australia where Sprite communicates irritation at Kingo for leaving her for popularity. However Kingo makes sense if he turned into an actor on account of the motivation gifted by Sprite's storytelling. In Australia, the group follows a path of deviant bodies to track down Thena and Gilgamesh in their private house in the open country. Gilgamesh has become talented at cooking and dealing with the house, and Thena invests her energy making a few dismal drawings. When she sees them show up, she has one more pass and attempts to go after them, expressing everybody in the world will soon die. However Gilgamesh stops her and Sprite clears her mind with an illusion that reminds her who she truly is. Circe gets some margin to look at Thena's drawings and feels terrible because she can't reconnect with Arishem. Yet Gilgamesh gives her a pep speech and reminds her it's more vital to tune in. Circe sits down and unwinds, which at long last enacts the stone and causes her to show up before Arishem. He tells her that the emergence is occurring, and he makes sense of the genuine reason for the Eternals. They were shipped off Bring forward the introduction of the Celestial Tiamat, as new Celestials come about at regular intervals and they have done this cycle on different planets before Earth, they happen through savvy life, which had been ended by the assault of the Deviants, yet with the Eternals having gotten freed of them, Rishem says it is presently time to clear out all life on Earth to clear a path for Tiamat, Circe is stunned by the disclosure however Rishem protects it by saying this is the ideal pattern of creation for their living things. He then makes sense of that Olympia never existed and that she and the other Eternals are only manifestations from the World Forge as fake creatures made for use by the Celestials. Circe can't recall this because the Eternals have their recollections reset after every development. To top everything off, Rishem made the Deviant to direct the harmony among predators and pray so insightful life might succeed. However he failed to keep a grip on the Deviant and they became predators themselves, therefore he made it with the goal that Eternals couldn't develop as they do. Subsequently, Circe lets the group know what she realized, and they understand Thena's sickness is really their old recollections actuating and coming clean with them. They are stunned and upset to learn their fake, yet the majority of them resolve to figure out how to save people of Earth. They figure they should track down Druig and check whether he might utilize his ability to surpass the psyche of Tiamat. The Eternals travel to the Amazon next. Druig is remaining in a town where he has been driving a group that live in outright harmony. He would rather not help the others in their main goal. Feeling betrayed over the reality his entire presence is clearly false. At night, Kingo expresses his compassion towards Sprite since he realizes that she's enamored with Icarus yet has not had the option to follow up on it due to her honest appearance. Sprite values the opinion until she sees Karun is recording also. She breaks the camera. Circe calls Dane to keep an eye on him and Icarus watches with envy, making Circe ask him for what reason he left her. When Icarus is going to abruptly account for himself, Crow appears and removes him. More deviants assault the town, so the Eternals promptly bounce into action. Circe invigorates a building to hide the people inside then tosses a lot of trees on top of the deviants. Druid controls the people as a brought together armed force, yet Circe promptly makes him pause and send the people to safety. Kingo pauses for a minute to charge his beam and kills a deviant by exploding its head. Icarus battles Crow, who pushes him against the ground to assimilate his powers. Anyway Gilgamesh comes to fight him next. And keeping in mind that they're participated in fight, Thena loses her mind once more and assaults Icarus. Gilgamesh notices and drives away to come to Thena and solace her, figuring out how to calm her down. Then Icarus pursues a flying deviant and makes it land in the town. 
where he kills a lot of them with his eye beam. One of them shocks him from behind and Cersei acts the hero, amazing everybody by changing the deviant into a tree, which she never had the option to do. Gilgamesh keeps on fighting Crow, yet at the same he's so occupied by watching out for Thena that Crow kills him and assimilates his powers. Then Crow changes form, looking more human-like and figuring out how to speak in English. Crow blames the Eternals for being killers. However, when Icarus makes an appearance to fight it, Crow takes off, then Thena races to Gilgamesh's side, who die in her arms after advising her to constantly remember, afterward. They burn Gilgamesh's body and, Thena tosses his remains into the stream, at last comprehension that controlling everybody would make him no better than a deviant, Druid consents to join the mission, yet his power isn't sufficient to control a Celestial, so they'll have to track down Fastos. Another memory shows 1945 in Hiroshima, soon after the drop of the nuclear bomb, Fastos remains in the outcome of the bombarding sobbing to Ayak and feeling regret for aiding people develop and progress in innovation just to keep killing one another. It is here where he loses confidence in humankind and chooses to leave it behind, back to the present. The group shows up in Chicago and is stunned to find that Fastos lives with a husband and a child in a house in suburbia. After hearing the story, Fastos explained his husband gave his confidence in mankind back, however he isn't willing to forsake his loved ones for a risky mission. Anyway his husband advises him to proceed with it. If it means that there will be a future for themselves as well as their child. Next the Eternals travel to Iraq, where they utilize their powers to free the Domo from its underground hideaway. Macri has been living there this time, just utilizing her speed to get out for provisions. Fastos thinks of the thought of connecting everybody's powers together through the Uni Mind, which will permit them to move their powers with the goal that Druid might mind control Tiamat. Kingo feels a little doubtful about this entire arrangement. Furthermore, he and Sprite say they'd prefer take cues from Icarus, who obviously feels quite wary also. Anyway Icarus lets his companion know that he isn't who Kingo thinks he is. Then, Icarus returns to another memory. Six days earlier, Ayak's meeting Icarus to let him know the ideal opportunity for the development is at last coming. Uncovering Icarus has consistently known reality, subsequent to living with people this time. Ayak figures they shouldn't proceed with the mission since mankind and Earth are lovely, so they merit better, Icarus tells Ayak he has something to show her first and brings her to Alaska. At a frozen lake, a lot of deviants have returned, and Icarus makes sense of they were frozen for a really long time before the glaciers start to soften because Earth core got hotter thanks to the approaching emergence. Icarus reports he's as yet faithful to Arishem and pushes Ayak to the lake, where Crow rapidly gets her and absorbs her powers. A short time later Icarus takes Ayak to the farmhouse, where he passes on the body for Cersei to view as later, in his sorrow. He can't resist the urge to shoot beam that light a fire, back to the present. Icarus lets Cersei know that he actually cherishes her, and Cersei holds his hand in comfort without expressing it back. Minutes after she feels the stone initiating inside her, meaning the development is going to begin, Fastos sends Macri to find the source of the emergence, and with her super speed she goes all over Earth to view the perfect place as a functioning spring of volcano the Indian Sea. Unexpectedly Icarus puts on his armor and declares he wishes. Ayak didn't pick Cersei, he goes after the fundamental room and uncovers he's known it all since. They left Babylon, and the group acknowledges it was Icarus who killed Ayak. When Mikari returns, with the intel, Icarus attempts to go after her, and Kingo endures the shot for her, no seeing Icarus. As his leader any longer, Kingo needs to go after him back. However at that point Sprite declares she's on his side and makes a illusion that permits them to escape. A while later Kingo reports he's leaving with Karun because he doesn't think saving Earth is really smart. Since Celestials being conceived implies new planets being made too, the group needs another arrangement to compensate for the missing individuals. What's more, Druid brings up Cersei had the option to change a deviant into a tree. Anyway Cersei actually has questions since she doesn't see the reason why she was picked by Ayak. So Thena makes sense of a leader protects their friends and family, and Ayak realized Cersei adored mankind since the very first moment. Prepared to fight, Cersei permits Fastos to remove the extraordinary stone from her body and use it to drive the uni mine. The Eternals travel to the volcano and Icarus orders Sprite to protect the rise while he breaks into the ship. Thena starts fighting him to keep him occupied, giving chance to the others to initiate the uni mine, which deactivates the well of volcano. Icarus hurries to stop them, first snatching Druig and killing him with his eye beam, then, Going after the ship to make it, crash, irate, Mikari starts fighting Icarus furiously while the volcano behind them emits too. Begin the rise, Cersei runs up the volcano to check whether she can do anything while Thena and Gilgamesh join Mikari to fight Icarus, however he's excessively strong and they can't stop him regardless of whether they cooperate. At that point, Crow shows up and joins the fight as well, focusing on Icarus. Anyway the others don't believe it should turn out to be all the more remarkable so they assault it first. Mikari traps it in a soil cyclone and Thena kicks him. Sending him into a cavern, Icarus utilizes the interruption to attempt to pursue Cersei, 
Yet Fastos utilizes an exceptional trap he created to catch him what's more, keep him on the ground, inside the cavern, Crow utilizes Gilgamesh's voice to screw with Thena's mind, making her lower her defenses, anyway when it is going to incidentally absorb her powers, it accidentally quotes Gilgamesh's remember and Thena awakens to kill it right away, at the highest point of the volcano, Circe is stunned to track down Ayak, just to unexpectedly get stabbed, Ayak had been an illusion made by Sprite, who has forever been desirous of Circe for getting to carry on with a grown-up life, she readies her powers to speed up the emergence, yet at that point Druig appears and takes her out, unexpectedly the ground begins to shake and the ocean goes frantic as Tiamat rises out of the volcano, Circe stands on top of him and attempts to utilize her powers to stop him, however at that point Icarus liberates himself from Fasto's trap and pursues her, anyway seeing the lady he overpowers with recollections and he can't force himself to kill her, Circe utilizes the opportunity to initiate the uni mind and this permits her to enhance her powers to change Tiamat into only a giant rock statue, Understanding his mistake, Icarus apologizes in tears and travels to space, where the burns from the sun him down to match the legend of his name. Sprite is crushed to see him gone. However Circe actually has some power from the Unimin left. In this manner she utilizes it to remove Sprite's everlasting status so she might carry on with the ordinary human existence. When their main goal is finished, yet again the Eternal split up. Thena joins Makari also, Druig on the Domo as they go search for other Eternals, while Fastos gets back to his loved ones, Sprite enrolls in a life experience school, and Kingo gets back to his films, Circe rejoins Dane, who acknowledges her for what her identity is, out of nowhere, Arishem shows up overhead and requests Circe, Kingo, and Fastos, he lets them know that he realizes they double-cross them, so he'll remove them for judgment, the end, if you like this story, please subscribe to the channel and like it to motivate me to bring you more stories like this.